discrimination involves treating people unfavorably because they are from a particular country or a part of the world, because of the ethnicity or accent, or because they appear to be of a certain ethnic background. In simple words, discrimination means an unequal treatment of different groups of people. Discrimination exists in the society as a defense mechanism on the part of frustrated people who blames another, more disadvantaged group, for the trouble that they face, even when those troubles stem from structural change. For example, fear of losing job leads to blaming immigrants for taking job rather than looking at how globalization has changed the economy. People may think about and treat each other differently based on their race and ethnicity in different ways. In many countries, there is no discrimination in the eyes of law. But in a practical sense, there are still a lot of racial and ethnic stratification and despite having equal legal standing, all races do not have equal social standing. Our race, gender, age, economic status, religion or sexual orientation can make the difference between whether we get the job or not, a fair paycheck or a good rental or whether we get randomly pulled over or shot and killed by the cops when suspected. Prejudice is a common human condition. Prejudice means prejudgment. It is an unjustified typically negative attitude toward an individual or group. Prejudice is an attitude whereas discrimination is a behavior. The former apartheid system of racial segregation in South Africa, the Nazis mass killing of Jewish people in Germany, centuries of bloodshed between Protestant and Catholic and Christian religion, a bloodshed of Shia and Sunni in Muslim religion, bloodshed of Hindu and Muslim during the partition of India and Pakistan are all extreme examples of discrimination. The argument what whites are superior race was used as a justification for slavery that was continued long even after slavery ended are all examples of discrimination around the world. Many Hindu believes prejudice or discrimination based on birth. Many Hindus believe in the caste system and think some people are better than others. I have discussed the caste system of Hindu in detail in my previous video. If anyone is interested, they can check my previous video. Some Hindus believe that below the caste system is another category of people called the untouchables. The social and cultural tradition in many Hindu communities tends to favor men over women. Some families value boys over girls for financial or social reasons. There are instances of girls and women being harmed as well as some Hindus choosing to abort female fetus. Today, statistics shows that the rate of discrimination against Muslims and people perceived to be Muslims is higher than it was immediately following the terrorist attack in the United States on September 11, 2001. Many of these face false stereotypes about their religion and morals. Epidemics have often led to discrimination against minorities. Pandemics are not only biological phenomena but also social phenomena. Throughout history, pandemics have been powerful engines of social change, exposing an inequalities in the distribution of health and wealth and prompting calls for the reforms of social institutions. The video of George Floyd's death at the hands of a police officer in Minneapolis triggered protests across the United States and brought renewed attention to ongoing concern about the systematic racism in the criminal justice system. The slaying in the midst of pandemic that has disappropriately infected and killed black people has exposed long-standing racial inequalities in every aspect of American life. An unarmed black man is more likely to be killed by police than an unarmed white man. We can go back even further to violence against Jewish communities in 14th century Europe during the Black Death. Jewish population were viewed as outsiders and were unfairly accused of causing the plague by poisoning wealth. 
During Philadelphia's 1793 yellow fever epidemic, for example, medical wisdom of the day said that black people were inherently resistant to its virtue of their race, which later turned out to be not true. Something similar happened in 1849 when America was swept by cholera. Irish immigrants were packed into rudimentary timber dwellings, lacking running water and sanitation. The Irish bore 40% of the mortality. By contrast, while the New Yorkers from Protestant background generally escaped the ravages of cholera by fleeing off the country. When New York was struck by typhus in 1892, the city's sanitary authorities blamed the outbreak on recent Jewish immigrants from Russia and they were all quarantined. By contrast, passengers who are traveling first class section of ships were not quarantined. The initial outbreaks of polio when erupted in New York were all blamed to Italian immigrants. While white Americans fled to their home, heavily armed policemen patrolled roads and rail stations to prevent Italians leaving the city. During the Civil War in America, an outbreak of smallpox among African Americans was left ignored. The vaccine existed while white victims of smallpox were given care and placed under hospital quarantine. The black victims were not given proper care. An outbreak of yellow fever led to false rumor that black people were immune to disease. When yellow fever ravaged the city, white physicians asked the free black inhabitants to stay behind and help bury the dead, nurses, the sick, dig graves, etc. The false notion that black people were protected from the virus ultimately led to an unnecessary death and increased racism. This theory of difference could be felt within the 1918 flu pandemic. The white population thought that the African American will die more. But in reality, African Americans happened to be less susceptible to the 1918 influential outbreak even though they largely received inferior care in segregated hospitals. When the AIDS epidemic occurred in the 1980s, the government, reluctance to help gay population, resulted in countless states and a slow response to act against the virus. The case in the early 19th century, when the plague appeared in San Francisco Chinatown, in this instance, Chinese people were blamed for its spread and were unfairly singled out as carrier of this disease. Prior to the plague's arrival, there were already negative ideas circulating about Chinese people fueled by economic fears that attributed unemployment and declining wages to Chinese workers, whom many white Americans also viewed as racially inferior. The plague amplified these sentiments and Chinese people were wrongly viewed as vector of the disease. This history, within a long history of anti-Asian stereotypes and sentiments connected with epidemic disease, is one of the reasons that calling COVID-19 the Chinese virus is a problematic today. Now, discrimination can be felt amid the coronavirus pandemic. A disappropriate number of black people have gotten sick and died, and reports of racism against minority groups have risen. Additionally, reports of discrimination among Asian Americans have been rampant since the outbreak was first reported in Wuhan, China. US President Donald Trump's use of the term Chinese virus and secretary have encouraged the use of hate speech in US. Following the spread of COVID-19 from Wuhan, China, discrimination towards Chinese people has increased. The COVID-19 pandemic has seen a rise in xenophobia around the world. Nevertheless, in India, the country has seen Islamophobic contents on social media linking the outbreak to Muslims. Racism hurts. A growing body of research shows its negative effects the mental and physical health of its victim. Sometimes it makes you feel like lashing out. Sometimes it makes you feel as if you are drawing. We all need to unite to demand accountability for the violation of the rights of minority. We all need to take concrete steps to end impunity. We must listen to and support the victims. 
we must address the roots of violence against women by eradicating discrimination and changing the mindset that perpetuate it. Let us rid our society of this cause for global sin. Let us end the violence for the benefit of all. Thank you.